Okay, I'll call this meet, uh, special meeting uh, to order. Result of the agenda for the May 5th special meeting be carried out, public hearings be adopted and approved, moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, 3.1. <clears throat> Result of the council open the public hearing for bylaw 4 2020 being a special service charge to assist in funding municipal policing. Moved by Councillor Morial, say by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, all in favor? Post. Well, aren't we having a public, are we opening the public meeting? Is that what this motion is? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. So this is on the uh, bylaw, the special service bylaw for 2020. So if there's any discussion, we don't have anybody uh, on our video tonight or anybody in person to make any um, presentations. So I guess if anything that council wants to discuss before I continue on. This is very similar to what we've done. I believe this is done every two years. So uh, this is just a, uh, a renewal of that, I guess if you can say, um, moving forward. Does anybody have any discussion on that? Well, I'm not sure if this, go ahead, I'll let Councilor Delorier go ahead. Okay, Councilor Delorier. I, I see that uh, the costs are, are 600,000 each year. Previous, previously, had we not done the, I, I, the, the whole amount? In previous years, like we'll no, not on no. special service. We've only done a portion of it on policing. Hmm. Okay. The actual bylaw that I, I I checked that the actual bylaw said one point two million. I think that was one of my questions. The other is I'm not sure. There are three. The second is I'm not sure why we didn't do this when we were doing the financial plan. And the third is um, I, I'm not keen on a two year one for now. I, I I'd like to sort of debate philosophically this issue, but I, I don't think it's appropriate to, given we've already passed the financial plan, to change it for this year. So I'm going to be suggesting we do it for one year only. But um, I can do that in council meeting, because that's where it'll be passed. And I can get voted for or against, so it doesn't matter. I'll raise my points and then it'll be what it'll be. Okay, fair enough. Any other discussion? <laughs> Okay, if there's no further discussion on 420-2020, I'll uh, close the hearing on that. <clears throat> and opening the other, resolve the council open the public hearing for bylaw 5-2020, being a special service charge to assist in funding municipal poli oh, that's that's on uh, municipal services, not on policing. We have a typo in that bylaw there, or that, that resolution. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? I, I, same point about one year, but other than that, um, this one was the same numbers and, and it wasn't a problem. And you felt that it should be a one year. That, that's what I'm going to move. I'm going to move an amendment, and I'll either get a second or I won't, and then we'll have a vote. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Councilor Delorier. Yeah, I just looked back in the 2018 and 19, and it was the full 1.1 million. Yes, it was. Yeah. So, Mr. Ganita. Uh, what has changed is that the provincial government has. Uh, separated out the funding that they give for municipal policing. It now comes directly from the Department of Justice. Before it was just buried in the municipal operating grant. So now we know that we get 451,000 for municipal policing. So 1.2 million minus the 451,000 grant minus uh, an amount to pay back what, what was uh, overtaxed in previous years. Is, explains why it's only 600,000. 
Councilor Gloria. So how many years will we have to pay, will it take to pay back what was overtaxed in previous years? I haven't uh, updated the uh, calculation uh, to include 2019 yet. Okay. You know, so we've been doing this for about five years. You figure we've been overtaxing by a half a million dollars a year for the last five years? Roughly? Uh, I'd have to do some digging. Okay. Okay, any other discussion? Councilor Morio. Unmute David. Just give us a minute. There we go. Okay. There. Um, last year, um, last year with the basket funding, when it came in through that, um, it didn't specify exactly what it was, correct? It was just all part of basket funding? Yeah, it, it, it was never separated out un, until uh, 2019 was the first year they separated it out. Right, so the, so the previous years, um, it was just all part of our basket funding from the province, so we would we taxed a, an amount for that, so because we didn't know exactly what the amount was that was part of our basket funding that was unconditional. So I don't know if there was overtaxation to that or or not. So. Councilor Delorier, have, Terry, have you uh, have you talked to whatever they call municipal affairs now and, and seen if we if we need to pay back what would have been because we never did this subtraction in previous years? Do we do we need to? Because it, I mean, if. We, if in previous years we never considered this against the, the money we got, just went into basically general revenue and we never considered it against the police costs, if they're not making us, why would we? Uh, at the end of 2018, the excess was 638000 and I, I haven't done the calculation to include 2019 yet. Uh, but I guess what I'm getting at is, if they never broke it down for us, why are we why are we saying that that was to go against police costs? Because now it is called a municipal policing grant, right? But it, it never was before. So why are we punishing ourselves for what we did in the past? Uh, I'm not going back to the past. I'm going just since we've known that it's for policing. It was actually 2018 was the first year that uh, it was uh, okay. specifically called policing. Okay, so you're just going back to 2018 then? Correct. Okay. Councillor Gray. Um, yeah, I, I think all of this is one of the reasons I, I'd like to break it into one year. Um, I, I really do think we should talk about what we're funding and how we're funding it and, and because um, it, uh, while I appreciate the logic of, of uh, Terry's point, um, had we not taxed for that, it's not like the taxes weren't going to be collected in any event because the monies were used for something. Um, and and so I, I think it's passed as part of a budget. So I, I really want to look at it in more detail. Um, Councilor Laurier. I guess question for Councillor Gray. So is your concern like you don't want it on a per parcel basis? Because basically all this is is, is break, breaking this cost out on a on a per parcel basis rather than an assessment basis. Yeah, I, I think it sort of depends. And I, I think I, I, I want to look at the entirety of the of the bylaw in due course. But um, it, it would have been more logical to me to do it in conjunction with all the financial plan because the the amount that we're going to spend on policing is $1.4 million. It doesn't matter whether we do it by parcel or by assessment. That amount is going to be expended. Um, and it's just that I, I want to look at, at, at how that's parsed out for individual types of parcels. Um, that won't affect me much more anymore, but, um, um, but it will, it, it philosophically, I just want to have a look at, that's my problem. And I will look at what we're doing in terms of repayment and how that works. 
Okay. Anything further? Okay. So then I will uh, then close uh, the um, public hearing for bylaw 5 2020. It's moved by Councillor Delorey, second by Councillor Gray. All in favor? It's carried. And we now adjourn. Okay, I'll call this meeting to order for May the 5th, 2020. Result that the agenda for the May 5th, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Council Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes for the April 21st, 2020 regular council meeting and the April 22nd, 2020 public hearings meetings be received and approved. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <clears throat> Number four, receptions and delegations. We have with us tonight Staff Sergeant Ray Campbell. Welcome, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Your Worship, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, I guess if, if you have anything that you want, it's nice to have you here once in a while. That's why we, we invited you tonight. Um, if you want to open up with anything at all, and then maybe if some counselors have some questions or comments, we can move forward from there. Um, as far as opening up, our detachments running status quo, we have no one that's off work or in isolation or sick due to any other type of condition. So as right now, we're running in a full contingency. Okay. Councilor White. A couple of uh, staff sergeant. <coughs> Firstly, thank you. And please thank your team on behalf of council because they're out there. They got enough difficult things to deal with. Now you got this little microscopic, sub microscopic virus to deal with. And you know, the people that are carrying it. And our communities think highly of the fact that they're trying to help us in so many different ways. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. It affects everyone, so everybody has to do a part. Yeah, and that's the truth. So I, I'm wondering uh, out loud, relative to, the, are there any specific issues that the RCMP is facing because of the COVID, the numbers of 10 people, people are being silly and pretending they have COVID, for example, and, and how your members are responding to that? As far as um, response, we have had very little complaints in regards to the COVID crisis. Um, we've had a few, but mostly that's been educational. We haven't laid any fines or done any solid enforcement towards that. As far as dealing with the issues of the quantity of 10 people or less, we have come to an issue. Um, the stores seem to be maintaining their own position and doing their job, which makes it easier for us. As far as our detachment, as you know, we're running, the detachment is blocked. We have an intercom system on the outside, so if it is pertinent or it's an emergency, they can still bus and can speak to them on the inside. We're still doing criminal record checks, which is a non-vital issue for us, but we are still doing it for people that need employment, such as nurses or anybody that needs something in the job market to keep them employed. So we are still status quo working. We have some working from home as well, but they are also need the laptop and can do what they can. Um, as far as protection for the officers, it's like everywhere else, we have our own personal protection. Um, when we remand prisoners and haul them down south to either Dauphin or to Winnipeg, we provide masks to our prisoners and uh, make sure that they have some personal protection on them, <coughs> which protects us. Councillor White. Before I go to the second question, I've looked inside these cars. They have that plastic thing between the backseat people and, and the drivers. Does that does that help? I guess. Yeah, it is a shield, but it also has a window that opens as well. Yeah. So, but like anything, it's better to be over cautious than, yeah. than not. Okay, the second question. Now, obviously, the, our community has an issue with crime, as many do, not just ours, of course. Uh, are crime rates diminishing because of COVID? Or are the bad guys, and bad girls, not going out as often, being as silly? On the initial onset of the COVID, our 
file load did decrease somewhat. I don't know whether that was just because of the pandemic went out and everybody, you know, took a step back. And recently our crime rate has gone up to its normalities just because the warmer weather is out, people are out and out and about. Um, we did see maybe a slight increase, but not compared to the national increase, but of course with COVID and everybody being in isolation, your, your partner and your other half are in close proximity of either other 24 hours a day, so that does some social communication between you. So, you know, when, when you're isolated together, the more time you spend together, the, the harder it is. So, we, But everything from right now seems to be status quo as we're opening up the, the floodgates, so to speak, in regards to COVID and reintegrating back into normal society. Well, thank you. Please thank you, Dean Forbes. Yes, thank you. And I, I'll say the same, you know, as far as your uh, the front line people, men and women are out there doing their jobs in this difficult time. Um, you asked the question, I think, about as far as the, the criminal background checks, because I think it's important that we get some of those done as far as the COPP program, getting it going. And I know that Council Morial has been working on that with some of the staff there, and yes. uh, I don't know how successful that's been so far, but definitely it's in, it's imperative to get that uh, part of the program done in order to get it kicked off. So I don't know if Council Morial was going to comment on that or not. Um, you mentioned the remand trips, yes. and, and I was going to ask, what is those numbers like? Can you do you have an, kind of an idea of how many times we're traveling out on average in a in a week? On average, it was one a week, and it's pretty much status quo to that effect. We haven't had to go to Winnipeg all the time. We've had one that just has gone as far as Dauphin and went through the court system there because they're trying to get some, they understand what the challenges are with running everybody to Winnipeg and then everybody's running to Winnipeg and then the court is in Dauphin so they're running CCTV to try to, and deal with that challenge. And so they have a, a judge that is sitting when he can in, in Dauphin which helps us and we'll haul them to Dauphin if, if it's permittable and then they'll just go deal with court there. But, the, like we said before, and the, the province is still spearheading it, the, the jail will close the end of this month. One of the things with the transfer of uh, trips that were uh, taking place, the east side of the province, I don't know if you're aware, but the province had set up a, a different system. I think it was using sheriffs or, or whoever. Yeah. And, and we've been kind of, up until the beginning of COVID, uh, we were, lobbying the province and speaking with the justice minister on that and hoping that we can get some traction as far as an alternative instead of using our own forces for them to have some other way of, of transferring uh, patients out of the community instead of using our CMP officers. Yeah, I understand that. And, and it is certainly a challenge just because our geographical area where we're at in the province. But, but the issue is the sheriff's are Monday to Friday, provincially, and they work don't work weekends, and they don't work in the evenings past four or five o'clock. So when we get a remand, it's usually in the wee hours of the morning. So then first thing in the morning when we come in at seven or eight o'clock, then we get the wheels going, start getting a remand hearing done, which involves a, a justice of the peace, a crown lawyer, and a defense lawyer. So by the time you get them all lined up, and by the time you get them all on the same call, it's usually mid-afternoon. Well, at 3 o'clock, you phone the sheriffs in Dauphin. It's a two-hour drive up here, and then it's another five hours to Winnipeg. So they're conducive of that, and they said they'd help us. Um, as far as our game plan, the sheriffs have offered, and we, we can utilize They've offered their bands up for us on the weekends, so the RCMP have access to using a, a prisoner van to haul prisoners. But then again, we still have to get that person to go. Great. Councillor. Do you have two members with them when they drive? To the yeah, depending on where they're going. Like, like for the instance, in the case of Dolphin, it's usually just 
one member will go down, one member will come back. Yeah. The challenge if to go all if they have to drive all the way to Winnipeg, that's if they've worked all day and then they're doing an escort down there, the challenge of them driving all the way back is unsafe. So it's either a two man or or they overnight it. Any other questions? Councilor Morio. Uh, Mr. Campbell, just uh, one quick question. It's been a while since uh, we received the monthly uh, report from the detachment. Do we have an idea when we can receive, expect our next one on the provincial template? Yeah, you've already received it. I believe you received it over a week ago. Okay, thanks. I'll look for it. Okay, we'll have administration watch for, for that. Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Mr. Campbell, thank you for joining us. And of course, I would want to uh, thank you for all the work that you and your team do for our community. It's, uh, uh, we treat you, you know, in the highest regard in, in the job that you serve and protect our community and our citizens. I do have a couple questions that uh, have come up from some of the conversations that we have have had. My first one is, in your opinion, uh, based on some of the questions here in terms of transporting prisoners um, in the in what we've discussed, that's only going to mean increased costs or increased expenses on your part. Correct? Yes, that's right. It comes out of my my budget that I'm allotted. And then uh, the other one, um, my biggest question is how do, how do you use, how is you you and your team dealing with um, the amount of calls that you've had? We've seen numbers roll through our our office indicating that we're almost double the call volume that that have been done in in previous years compared to now, um, and knowing that we've lost a position, a federal position. Um, to the up north, how is you, how are you and your staff handling the the workload that is doubled with less resources? So the way it is augmented right now is we have six constables that are paid by the town, and I have I've lost a federal position, but I still have eight constables that are paid by the province. I also have three corporals, one that's paid by the town, and two that are paid by the province. So to be quite candid, 60% of my workload is within the town of Swan River. So in order to do that, I'm augmenting using provincial resources to pick up the slack, so to speak, in order to make the call volume and the service delivery as best as we can. So just if I'm hearing you right, that um, we're we are being the town of Swan River in, in in a lack of better words is being subsidized by our provincial counterpart to take care of regular crime and activities happening within our own community yes it, we have like I have we have a, three corporals one is town I have one is designated as a north corporal one is designated as a south depending on how we break up the our our territory, which is all the way up to Overflowing River to Madge Lake Turnoff and, and South of Cowan. So so what we do is teams work during the day, the call volumes wherever they go, that's how it happens. You know, I'm not saying that resources haven't been used in other areas as well when when the wheels fall off the bus, say in Minnetonis or something. But by and large, resources are being used in the town. Thank you. The other, my final question, um, and then this is just something that came up recently that I noticed. Um, when incidents are, do you always, I, I, when incidents are posted to social media, 
Uh, I'm not asking if your department is constantly looking at, at social media, but when you see it's instances or other citizens have brought in instances of crime or a, a situation happening on, on social media, are, do you take those, um, how, how are those handled? I guess more specifically, um, there was a dash cam with somebody running a, a stop sign in, in our community that was posted to social media. I'm not sure if that one was reported to you or not, but if that is, what, what is what is your role, the department's role in, in seeing those? We certainly will investigate it and we'll use that evidence to our advantage, obviously, because that certainly picks <coughs> out who the, the person knows that's in the law. Um, we did actually have a file here the other day, but I believe it was not in town that went through a stop sign. Yeah, this one wasn't in town. It was uh, yeah. the intersection of 486 and Highway 83. And I believe we have that, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, other than that, that's all my questions. Just uh, kudos to you and your team for doing the best possible work that you do for us. Well, and you should all pat yourselves on the back, too, because you've got to keep the town going, and you're trying to do the best you can with what resources you have. Okay. Councilor Gloria. I just wanted to make a comment that, um, you know, and I guess this is purely anecdotal, but in the last month or so, I've seen a higher police presence than I have at this time of year for the past number of years. So I think uh, good job for that. And I, I've even heard comments. I know you must have had people walking a beach or something because I, I've heard comments that people, and it was noticed. So, or, you know, or maybe, maybe they're actually looking for something. I'm not sure, but people noticed that, hey, they're. They're out of their they're out of their cars and they're walking around, and I know it's people want to see that, but it's it's not necessarily the most efficient thing to do. But sometimes you just gotta wave the, wave the flag. But oh, uh, sure, yes. but uh, I think anecdotally, I I think I've seen a bigger uh, a bigger police presence around town for for spring when when usually crime is is popping up. So good on you. Good, thank you, Council White. I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but I look at all, I literally having dinner and then Judy and I, and Donald is being assumed was a bad guy. And he's running, he's looking over his shoulder. He's running really quite well, he's an athletic guy. And Donald was an RCAP officer, running, chasing him down the street. This is 5 o'clock. So I phoned Sergeant Henson. I said, I don't know if this is fun to play what's going on. But I said, I said, thank you. He got back within five minutes just to get him. I said, I said, holy smoke. I always hear that guy scared him run faster than the police officer just that. But uh, he got back to me right away, so we got the guy. So not only are you walking the beach, you're running the beach too, apparently. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other further questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you again for coming in. You know you're always welcome here anytime. And uh, I'm sure that we'll be talking more. And again, thank you, all your members for all the work that they do. And it's not an easy job being, I'm sure, uh, policing in every aspect of any community in, in this country of ours. So we thank you for all that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, can't get up and shake your hand. Yeah. Roll this way. Yeah. Thanks, Sheriff. Sorry, I can't. Okay. So moving on, 6.1. Resolved that application for variation order 2, 2020, be received and public hearing be held on May 19, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by anybody? Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received, moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, questions to Mr. Poole. I'll give you a minute. Councillor Gray? Yes. Um, I had a couple of things to ask. People had asked me, so I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Poole. 
Go you got to find them. Okay, no problem. Well, I'll let Councilor White go first. Just uh, sure. Relative to the engineering, that reducing all expenses and recycling building until RM responds to letters on use. Yeah. Elaborate on that, please. Uh, well, basically, the, the RM has been using the building since last June, and uh, we haven't been. We, we were at the time we were undecided of, of how our household hazardous waste was going to work, but we have it included in our contractor's uh, responsibilities at the landfill. Uh, we're getting the, the storage building uh, set up next week, so we, we, we won't need that building in the case that they do. But uh, they haven't responded to to our letters for for how the the numbers are working out because right now we're we're paying the expenses for that building, and uh, we are going to well we're going to just start we're going to change the locks and shut everything down to minimize expenses, or at least until there's agreement between the two municipalities, we cannot continue to pay those expenses when we're not using the building. So relative to that concept, which I have no difficulty with, I just keep hearing we send the emails to, to the municipality and they don't reply. That, are these emails getting there? Are we following up with a phone call to make sure, did you get this email? Maybe they're not going, I don't know. I've, I've sent a, a letter, uh, to several emails. I've, I've talked to their, uh, I guess they're clerk in charge, but they they definitely know that we're trying to get a hold of them. Okay, thank you. We'll save part of that for in camera as well. Any other questions, Councillor Gray? Were you ready? I am, uh, Your Worship. Uh, there were two things out of the report, and then two, three other things. Um, the first was um, with respect to uh, the comment. The I guess the third from the bottom second from the bottom which was uh, responding to a union grievance i assume that 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 you're going to be a report on that in in the in-camera session i can yeah thank you and the other is um uh working with with neptune and stephanie to ensure updated billing software is working correctly correctly can you elaborate a little bit on that for a moment uh that's the software upgrade that uh, we budgeted for this year so uh, basically uh Darren and Stephanie, after our diamond upgrade uh, uh, was finished, Darren and Stephanie are working with our, our Neptune rep just to make sure uh, that everything, all the bugs are worked out. It's a internet-based system now, so it's it's new. They're just going through the processes. They've gone through the new billing period. There is there's a few flaws, but uh, uh, pretty much everything is is up and running now. We're pretty happy with it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure, that, so it is running now? Yeah. Okay. Um, the three things I wanted to raise, people have raised with me three things. Um, one is um, the potholes on Curry Road. Is that part of our upgrade or plan for fixing this year? Or are we going to grab like, that? What are we doing? Like Curry Road North? Yes. Yeah, yeah. The greater is actually out right now, which... It should have been, I thought Curry was one of my points that uh, I told the foreman had to be done. I haven't checked to see if it was. I, I, been, but. It was talked to me a couple of days ago, so it may have been done, but okay. I, it's it, it's been raised with me by three different people. Yeah. Um, two people have raised with me, uh, have we considered reducing the speed limit by the yard? Because apparently the people by there think our vehicles go by very quickly. So we do have Third Street South already at 30. Uh, what, what, is there a particular street that, that's being discussed? Well, it's, I, I think, uh, well, there was there were a couple of people, but, but from both ways, people seem to think that 30 is more of a suggestion than a rule. I see. think, I think we think, we think it's more of a suggestion than a rule. Right, we do. We have our radar sign currently being moved to to Eighth Avenue South due to residents' concerns, and we told them it'll be there for for three weeks. But uh, we we could try and put the radar sign on Third Street and inform the RCMP that uh, that it, it is a school zone, even though school's not in session. Uh, they still have to conform to the bylaw. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's all around through. The, it's it's our vehicles that are being complained about. So. If you could just mention to your guys, 
bit. Right? Yeah. Because that's, a, that's an awful thing, quite candidly. It's not just in the school zone, it's just generally that things seem to be moving quickly. The last is in terms of sidewalks. Um, there's a huge bump by ACE. Um, have, is that on our plan to fix? Uh, yes. Yeah, because there's there's actually that is that is one of the the trip hazards that that's on our list to repair for sure. Okay, you know that there's been a recent in accident there. I did not. Yes. On the sidewalk, a resident hit that coming out of Ace, um, fell and broke his glasses and landed face first. So, um, quite. Um, actually quite a serious injury so um, i don't know whether he's going to take it up with you um, but um, it's something that should be looked at yeah good to know thanks okay those are the only things your worship thank you councillor friesen i'm i'm just wondering on your public works list uh anything about the park i had someone down um, doing something at the horseshoe pitches and wondered if the leaves were going to be gathered or if that's in the works anyway. Uh, just, just in my discussions with Hugh, I know they had a motor breakdown on their leaf picker. So it was down all pretty much all last week. But uh, we had several several uh, complaints on the leaves in the park and and uh, it was running as soon as they got the as soon as they got the uh, machine back running. I, so I, they'll, I, they'll get there if they have it. Okay. I, I, can, I can answer that because that's my backyard. And they've been working on that already. Perfect. So. Thank you. Part is your backyard. <laughs> kind of. Uh, is that it? Go ahead. Um, one other one, I think, for camera, Mr. Poole, is just the development on uh, Second Avenue South. I think that we've been having those discussions in camera. We'll, you'll update us with that there. Yeah, I have that as an item in camera. Okay. The other question I have is dealing with unsightly properties. Who is doing that, and what? How how bad is it? Who's completing those? What does that look like moving forward? Well, it's I would say it's a joint effort between myself and the fire chief. We we bounce it off each other basically, and and. Uh, and it, it really, once you once you go by and take a look at it, once you see how severe it is, we realize we have to do something. Uh, council should know we're de we are de currently dealing with the union on this exact situation, so it is a little tough. But we don't intend on on not moving forward with the uh, with the violators. We we've, we've got to get that stuff cleaned up. It's pretty bad. So more more details in the in regards to that in camera as well. That yeah i i just didn't want to give a location unless council wants me to i can no if I you want to check it out yourself no i don't need a i don't need locations <laughs> i'm just in terms of uh the union in that situation oh yeah thank yeah. you that's all i have okay for the discussion all in favor opposed it's carried mm. Resolved that the April Protective Services report be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.3, Council reports. Let's start with Councillor DeLaurier. Um, I guess uh, I had one meeting last what, week, whatever day that was. The District Recreation Commission. Uh, we have some news coming out of there. Um, we'll be receiving a letter from the commission. Um, so just a heads up that and the commission is uh, making the recommendation that we disband. So um, with with not having the rock funding, with not having the uh, uh, you know the uh, employees anymore, and not getting the government grant. There's there's nothing that the commission does that the municipality can't do. Kinds to you. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, the, we're projecting maybe a, a fall wrap up uh, to wind things up, but uh, so we'll continue with the the summer programming that was scheduled. 
Um, there will be more details in the letter coming from the chairman. Okay. Uh, that's it for me. Supplemental and 20. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, in regards to the district rec meeting, I was part of that one um, as well. And yes, we will be receiving a, a letter as indicated by Councillor Delory. Um, not only all of the points that he has raised, I think there was uh, perhaps a lack of um, cooperation in, in um, the general collaboration, I guess, of, of, of that organization so yes it is it will be the recommendation to disband um, there is also recommendation coming to councils in terms of funds that are left over and what that might look like for future um, I think that the Commission has come up with a really good plan on what where those funds will be directed and what we'll use them for and Councillor Gray will elaborate on that as well as we move forward um, there's also the item um, that I've already asked for in camera that I mentioned, two of them now. Um, just a reminder that there is security guard training if we're thinking of um, putting some of our own resources out on the field, uh, or in the field, I should say. So there is security guard training currently being um, facilitated or being published right now to sign up deadline is May 22nd for a very good price if that's something that we might be interested in that's through partnership with UCN um, we did have a rise meeting um, I don't remember can't remember what day it was last week um, so there isn't finally an update with that we are uh, moving forward with the search of an EDO um, the chair is is engaging the firm that we've that the group has chosen, so we should have an EDO before too long, which is exciting, um, knowing that we're in a situation that we're in, economic development is something that needs to be um, addressed, and hopefully we can come out of COVID with some great ideas and, and some great things for the community. Also, I had the opportunity to be part of a, um, a subcommittee of the uh, business consortium and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, a subgroup that has established or kind of formed um, just helping businesses with the COVID-19 situation and what we're doing with that, um, which will bring me to a point in uh, municipal affairs as we get into camera. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for their extra efforts with the COVID-19 crisis. I know that we are opening up, um, the government is opening up certain businesses and things in phase one. Uh, my aspirations for the community is just to exercise caution with that um, and take it slow so that we're not taking one step forward and two back. So uh, keep up the good work. It's, I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Just to exercise caution and uh, common sense when you're out and about. That's all I have today. Thank okay. you. Councillor White. No particular. Uh, I don't know the name either. Uh, Deputy Mayor with Tony, but I dropped into the, the office of something and I slipped in and attended the Chamber of Congress Business Consortium Rise meeting. And I want to really compliment that team because their goal is to make the valley a better place to, to be in working with all the municipal governments, working collaboratively and trying to help one another. And, and that's the mindset that we should all be working towards. So uh, I appreciate the goal of, your, of that team. So please thank them again. Uh, the 22nd, we had our financial plan, uh, which we're still talking about, which is always interesting. On the 23rd, I had a harm slash help meeting and the harm team is basically trying to help those who are disenfranchised or those who don't have the gifts that we have and trying to train and work with that group so we have this social distancing, talking about drugs, talking about hygiene, and I think as a consequence of that meeting, they have communicated with uh, CEO Kroll about the possibility of coming here to one of our cow meetings and talking about what they're doing and how to do it again while, cow, while COVID is going on. coming to the next cow meeting. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I have two uh, COVID meetings with, with the Prairie Mountain Health and there's 
I think most of you are aware there's testing in Swan River now. There's a number I wish they had it with me on the door over there. I'm sure your doctor would have it. And as I understand it, if you have any of the symptoms, not four or five of the symptoms, you have the cough, the fever, the, the, the aches, pains, talk to your doctor. And hypothetically, I believe that testing can occur here, should occur here. There's been of an issue with people with COVID. People are staying away from going to see their doctors. People are staying away uh, from maybe seeing when they should. And as a consequence, there are people who are now going back to see the doctor and they pushed it too far. They've gone too long and it's made it more difficult trying to help those people with physical health and a significant mental health issue to where people have not been going for concerns of COVID or concerns of their cells. So uh, those, those things are quite disconcerting for the medical world, but uh, they're trying to address them right now. <coughs> so that's it, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Friesen. Um, I guess my only issue is July 1st, Canada Day picnic in the park. I don't know what your feelings are towards canceling it. Um, there's a lot of things to be done beforehand, and right now I'm thinking that I'm just going to probably cancel it. I think, I think that probably with most of the public gatherings that have been canceled and all that, that those have been. As far as fireworks go, I, I think they should continue on. But Councillor Gray, you're in recreation. I guess if you want to, I, I thought we discussed it last time, and that that was what we'd agreed we were going to do was cancel July first. The, the picnic in the park and any public gathering and that we agreed that we were going to do the fireworks to the extent that we could so that everyone could see them and and keeping distancing at, at the fairgrounds and whatever but I, I thought that that was what we agreed I, I i can't imagine that we're going to have a public event because there's not going to be an available i think it's been the government of manitoba has been pretty clear that it isn't going to allow huge public gatherings um over the summer and, and so I, I just don't think there's any point in us because it, because Councillor Reason's right and, and she and her committee always do a fantastic job, but uh, it's a lot of work. And, and if we just get to June 15th and then realize we can't do it, what would be the point of investing all that work? So I think we should cancel it for now. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't believe in July 1st or believe in the, the value of what's been occurred in the past, but maybe next year we'll be able to do it again. I agree, and um, we'll just make sure that uh, Mr. Fedorchuk touches base with the fireworks guys and perhaps ask them to just do high fireworks. Yes. In the past, they've done both, and when you're in the grandstand, you can see the shorter ones, but we're going to block that off so that people can't even get to the grandstand. They can watch it from their vehicles in the parking lot or from their homes. So all it'll actually have to be done is the uh, blockades put up on uh, 13th at each end so the cars can't walk it down until all the fireworks go on. Okay. You didn't have anything? Okay. All right, so that's clear, I believe. Okay. There'll be details, I guess, to the public, but I think it's pretty much been said here tonight. Is okay. Darren there? Pardon? Darren, are you Mr. there? Mr. Fedorcha? Yeah, I'm here. So did you hear what I just said about touching base with the fireworks guys? Yeah, I'm already sending the email. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And that's it? Councillor Friesen? Yes, that's okay. it. Okay. Councillor Gray? Yes. Um, oh, I'm losing power now. How good is this? Anyway. Um, I have four things to comment on. The first uh, two the first two are meetings that have already commented on by Councillor Spintoni and and uh, Delorier. The RISE meeting, we also regularized all of the proceedings. It was agreed that we would use the 2020 assessment and, and populations. Um, we didn't talk about it on a going forward basis because there's only the three year commitment in 2022, probably halfway through 2020. Um, and, and the end of 2021, we have to discuss it again uh, for 2022. Um, but the expectation is that we'll relook at new numbers each time and that if it's functional, and, and you will recall that I think everybody in our council was not dissimilar from everybody on the other three members of RISE. That is, that if it's functional, if it's working, if we're actually getting something for it, everybody wants to participate. If in fact we're getting nothing for it, uh, then we will it, it will, will, it will wither and die and it will go a natural death. Um, 
so I, th I think we actually have been working pretty well in that group. Um, I, I have to say it, I, it's been um, better than it, I had perhaps anticipated. Um, the Swan Valley Rec Commission is wound up. I'm not sure if we should discuss in camera or just wait for the letter. Um, there are some ideas. Um, I, I, I'm not totally certain about the, the plan for, for the surplus. There's about $100,000. We are going to finish the year, uh, the summer, with uh, the Recreation Commission doing the, the uh, uh, programming. Uh, I think that works out well for everybody. Uh, and then we're going to look at winding up in the fall. Um, there are, uh, I don't know, uh, the other two members, what do you think? Should we mention what, what the suggestion is or wait for the letter? I think. In my opinion, we should wait for the letter or have a discussion and that's, in camera. No, uh, I don't think we should we discuss in camera, but we could wait for the letter. It's public money. Wait, wait, public wait discussion. for the money. I would or, or the letter. Yeah, I, would I think. Uh, in my opinion, I would just wait to have the, if we were to have the discussion that all the municipalities have the same information yeah. coming forward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, perhaps we can have a quick discussion in camera, just so that all the, the, all seven council members know. Uh, but it's just it, it will literally be three minutes to just say this is what the plan or this is what's being proposed, so that people can turn their attention to it. Um, and and I, it would be safe to say that um, the other two members were not interested at all in having a unified recreation plan. I think that's the mildest we could say about it. Um, I want to give particular kudos during COVID to um, the French Center. Most of you know how um, close it is to me in any event, uh, but they have been handing out um, hundreds of packages and, and things to elders and others throughout the community. They have, in doing that, have rented the halls. So we have revenue from the hall uh, of $1,000 a month. Uh, and I think um, they, there have been monies that have come both from the MMF government and from the um, federal government through the National Association of Friendship Centers, and they've been using that money wisely uh, and have, effect, uh, have been meaningfully uh, addressing some short-term issues that have affected people in our community with respect to COVID. So I think a particular shout out to them. And particularly, as I said, rather than just um, focusing on themselves, they, they um, Kenny and the team there um, rented the uh, the our hall, uh, the Memorial Hall, for um, like I said, for the next several months um, to take care of that that project. Uh, settlement Services was supposed to have a meeting this evening, last evening I should say. Uh, they we didn't because of the COVID thing. And the next time we'll have a meeting is June, um, but things are going along pretty swimmingly. Uh, in fact, it looks like there'll be a bit of a, a surplus, so we're dealing with some of, of those issues. All of those services are being offered, um, so people are doing everything they need to do on a frontline basis, so I think we may give them some extra pay uh, with respect to that. Those are the four things that I have to report on for the last two weeks, Your Worship. Thank you. And uh, you're right, with, uh, with the Friendship Center and the MMF and what they've been doing in the community has been outstanding. Uh, Councilor Morio. A um, couple of things this week. Um, on April 22nd was our financial hearing. Um, it was great to have the participation that we had in the web-based system that we've uh, put forward. Um, also in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, a number of residents have been uh, coming forth with uh, issues on crime and things like that and been recommending to them that uh, uh, if they have any evidence or concerns in that, that they need to forward them to the RCMP um, so that a file can be created and uh, I take note and go from there. Um, COPP is coming along, a few more little things to um, iron out and then hopefully we can get a training session uh, going for our members that uh, have successfully passed the uh, criminal record check and submitted their applications. Um, and then that we can be uh, starting some patrols here in the near future. And then and lastly, I just want to thank uh, the people of Swan River and all that, that uh, um, now that the province is relaxing some of the restrictions that we've had on um, to uh, exercise caution. And as Councilor Wintoni said, we don't want a relapse of it. So, but uh, my appreciation to uh, everybody out there that practices the social distancing and the uh, 
infectious disease uh, monitoring um, and precautions that they are doing uh, to uh, redo, um, reduce the uh, spread of the, the, um, the virus. So um, keep it up and hopefully we can get back to uh, normal sooner than later. That's all I got. All right, thank you. Uh, for myself, I guess I've been having a couple meetings with the Reeves um, and, and either over the phone or, or um, other methods. Um, we're trying to get some things established with a G4 meeting, which we or G5, but G4 meeting in particular to discuss a few things that we have to uh, talk about. We also have to move forward with a way that we can discuss or or, or get to uh, the the mechanism together for shared services or, uh, and all that. So, because right now we're basically sitting with no agreements at all. So we need to be moving on that. So I've been talking to the Reeves about that. Um, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> um, I'm glad to hear that RISE had a very productive meeting because I, like I said in the last meeting, that I think that we need to be focusing on economic activity or development and having an EDO, a good EDO in place to move us forward through this whole COVID thing and beyond is so important. And, and I've been hearing that actually from our uh, municipal partners and Reeves, especially in the last little bit. So it sounds like there's rise, like, as Councillor Grace says, it sounds like they're a little pumped up now, so we're, we're ready to move forward. So that's, that sounds uh, really good. Um, as far as the, um, the COVID, yeah, you know, the community has done such a good job, the province and everywhere else, and, and we need to move forward. I know some businesses have opened their stores, and some people might be feeling that, you know what, you know what, we've gone through this, we're good to go, and we don't have to worry no more. And that's not even the case at all. You have to still continue to practice every safe measure that we possibly can and listen to what the province and, and the health people are telling us because uh, we definitely do, want, do not want to go back to a, a, a huge um, uh, breakout in, in this, um, this virus. So definitely to save more lives and to continue to go on, let the health experts develop some type of a, uh, a vaccine for this, we must uh, be vigilant during this time. So I thank you and I thank everybody else in, in the room here, I'm sure, and the community. But, you know, I said it before, but our public work staff, our front line people here that we just opened up the, the building here just yesterday are protected and they feel safe within the, the building and we'll continue on to make sure that we monitor that every step of the way. Mr. Kroll, do you have anything to add to that at all? Uh, no, just uh, running a few policies that have been uh, on the schedule here for a while. We're starting to get those ready. I'll have one for the next town meeting. Um, Patty and I uh, took some uh, town folio training remotely with the people who run town folio. It's a, a background on all the statistics of the town, which helps uh, businesses in that if they want to locate here, they have good information on what's available and uh, and really all the background on the town. So it's good. Perfect. Okay. So moving on to nine, nine point one, Councillor Quintoni. Just a quick comment. I wanna uh, thank you, administration. Uh, CAO Kroll and, and Ms. Hankelman for taking the time and working with Town Folio. It was an uh, initiative by RISE um, in last year's budget that was paid for and I think that we are the first municipality to get on board with that so um, kudos to you and and, it, and that's what people are looking for when they're uh, wanting to uh, have some economic stimulant in a community so thank you for all that hard work with that. Councillor Gray. Yes, just uh, um, two things. The first, um, well, second in time, but the first that I'm going to raise through you to CAO uh, Kroll. Um, I, I assume that we're using the subscription that was paid for by RISE and that as a result, Council Wintoni and I should raise at the next RISE meeting renewal of that because it's massively cheaper if we have all four municipalities do it as once than for each individual municipality. It's essentially about half the price if all four municipalities do it. So is that how we're doing uh, town folio? Yes, yes it was, yes. Perfect. So we should make sure it gets renewed, Councillor Wintoni, because um, I think it should be coming up for renewal around the 1st of July is my recollection. 
I'll make I'll make a note on that on my list as just, well. Yeah, just make a note for Stacy to uh, make sure that we pay the renewal. Um, the second thing, your worship, is 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 for something that arose out of you. I was going to raise it actually under the veterinary clinic um, thing, and and um, we have a quite a large number. And you mentioned this in terms of be, being ready for G four. We have quite a large number of uh, shared services agreements or non shared service non shared service non agreements. I guess right now is what we have, um, and so and and other things where clearly we should be looking at whether or not there should be shared services. And we've had the disaster of recreation is there could we set aside one co cow meeting expressly to go through all of the various shared service agreements mm -hmm. to talk about the foreign funding formulas about what philosophically we think they should look like because we have a mishmash of things where it, it is not clear to me how we came to many of those uh, policies I know how Rise was because I know we spent a whole year almost debating it and fighting and and getting through it. Um, and then we I know how um, the Swan Valley watershed um, was done, but <laughs> not that I agree with that, but that's how it was done. But all of the other ones, I'm not sure how the formulas work or how it was decided. And, and I know that Council Delorier uh, in the past uh, has it, and Council Wintoni have both expressed some frustration um, when municipal council other municipalities have simply said well we should just change that to whatever they go well no there's an agreement and so I think we should go through all the agreements be clear on that and have a, a philosophical understanding and uh, a strategy so we may want to do part of that in camera a strategy for when we're talking about it at the G4 uh, just as we do when we go to the AMM meetings and meet with ministers where we thoughtfully go through what our points are and how we're going to express them. But I'd like to set aside one, at least portion, but I think we'll need most of a, a COW meeting um, to do that. And obviously we should do it before June 4th when the when the next uh, G5 meeting is. Right, and it, it's good that you brought that up. It was actually in my notes to bring that up in camera uh, to get ahead of some of those things. So definitely it's something that I was been thinking about as far as for us to open the books up and have a look at and prepare ourselves because I think the process is going to be done a little bit different this time around. Uh, possibly the 26th? Yeah, the 26th, we just said. So you can mark that down on your calendar. That's fine. Uh, the 26th is fine. Uh, I'll, I may or may not be in Winnipeg on that time, but I, I attend by video anyway, so what does it matter? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so if that's everything, we will move on. 9.1. Result that the Town of Swan River authorized Blaine Healy to hunt and destroy crows within the Town of Swan River as a deterrent of the West Nile virus and to be reimbursed as per the attached terms listed in Schedule A. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Deputy, Deputy Mayor Antoni. Discussion? Go ahead. Oh, sorry, sorry. Councillor Wood, Tony. Um, just a question in terms of 2019. Uh, did we have a, a <coughs> cost that was paid to him for the amount of crows that were um, destroyed? Mr. Ganita? Can you repeat the question, please? Was there? Do we have an amount that we paid to Mr. Healy for crows for 2019? Just for curiosity's sake, and what? Uh, how many were destroyed? I can do the math. I'm just looking for a total. If we've paid him, I don't ever remember seeing a check paid to him for t in 2019. Uh, just give me a minute to look that up. Okay. Uh, well, while he's looking that up, a little funny story. I've known for forever since I've been on council that we hire a crow hunter every year. When I first read this, I thought it said cows, and I had a little, for about 15 seconds, I had a little freak out. I'm like, why are we shooting people's cows? Why wouldn't we try to get hold of them if they got out? So, yeah, nothing nothing more constructive to add, but I thought I'd share my little freak out. You light it up anyways. Yeah. Councilor Gray. Do we actually want a, a 22 being used? I, I would have thought a 410 is the appropriate um, weapon because it dissipates so quickly. It 
kind of, I don't know if Mr. Poole wants to comment on that. It's got a choice up there on there. I don't know much to do with uh, caliber of right. Yeah, I, I, I leave that to Blaine. I don't, uh, if, if that's the wish of council, we can, we can delete the 22, but I, I would say at least give me a chance to talk to Blaine about it. Maybe there's some reason i know he he shoots beavers as well i think we uh we have this deal is for beavers as well it's just not on the agreement but i know that uh, we do call him <laughs> to get rid of the beavers <laughs> <laughs> uh council Friesen is saying that the 22 is more accurate so she's the hunting hunter well, in the group. i'm not a hunter but i've seen a few of the guns that we had at the store and yeah. Yeah. Birds. It's just that a, a rifle carries further, and a twenty-two within a built-up area um, has some greater risk. That's my only concern. I, I'm. I'm. I. I, I yeah. I would. I could ask Blaine those questions. I'm sure he's not using the twenty-two to shoot crows in residential areas, but uh, uh, I, I guess I can get back. I can get back to you on. I, what I have he's no doing problem with, with the resolution. I just, uh, like I said. Um, I, I know that a, a 22 can carry and still have enough force within about a kilometer or seven, 750 meters for sure. And the result is, I think we should be very cautious about authorizing it anywhere within the town limit. Right. Um, go ahead, Mr. Gadina. Uh, in 2018, there were 73 crows and one beaver cost $307. In, in 2019, we paid $392. I don't have the breakdown. Thank you very much. That's all I wanted to know. Go ahead. Uh, can I just point out in Schedule A, it does it does say a 22 or a 410. Yeah, no, I realize that. I was just wondering whether we should bother with the 22. I'm about to lose power, so. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the Swan Valley Veterinarian Services District Board 2020 budget be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result? Your word? Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to tell. I was just going to tell you that the letter uh, regarding um, the Swan Valley Dec Recreation Commission just came in. I'm just about to forward it to all of my colleagues on council. Okay, thank you. Resolved that the Swan Valley Veterinary and Services District Board 2020 Municipal contribution in the amount of seven thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and sixty two cents approved for payment. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by. Councillor White, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Councillor Morio, I don't know if that's a vote or if, if what that was, but. <clears throat> 10.1. Result of the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General checks number, general accounts checks number 26081 to number 26137 for a total of $355,637.68. Payroll counts checks number 4657 to 4662 for a total of $89,863.69. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by anyone? Uh, Councilor Morio. Discussion? Councilor Morio? Um, check number 26098 to BDR Services Limited. Um, it says town office inspection cancellation charge. What were they coming to inspect? Was that the? That's the fire alarm system, but uh, I was unaware there was a $600 cancellation charge. I will be... Uh, I guess that's paid already. I did, I had no idea. Can we have a discussion with them anyway? And uh, on yeah. a board basis that under this times. Um, but Charles, did you know about the cancellation charge? Anybody? I did not know. 
Okay. Uh, so following that up then, uh, which manager uh, signed off on that payment? That would be the that would be the superintendent of works that signed that invoice. Okay. Okay, I'll have to talk to Darren uh, tomorrow and get back to you. Okay, no problem. Thanks. Further discussion? Ask who canceled it. Who canceled it? They're going to uh, that. <laughs> I canceled it because of COVID. I remember having the discussion, but uh, they did not mention $600 cancellation fee. Okay, great. well, let's find out about that then. Thank you for yeah. the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's okay. 10.2, resolve that the financial statements for the one month ending January 31st, 2020 be adopted as received, moved by Actually, there went Tony, seconded by Councilor Morio. For a second, I seen two Councilor Grays on the screen. Discussion. All you should only see one now. Pardon? You should only see one now. I my 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 uh, tablet died, oh. so I'm on my phone. I can't see you uh, uh, your, uh, your video, so. Do you have any questions on this? Nope, we're good. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. Is your video feed gonna come back, Councillor Gray? Yeah, it will in a minute. Okay. If there's anything, maybe just uh, say something until we can see you. I will. Okay. Result of the financial statements for the two months ended February 29th, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result that the financial statements for the three months ended March 31st, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni. Seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 11 for bylaws, 11.1. .1. Resulted bylaw number 4, 2020, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to establish a rate for police protection as a special service for the Town of Swan River for the years 2020 and 21, most inclusive be read a first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Gray. Oh, sorry, I would move amendment to provide for only 2020. The mover and the seconder would have to agree? Or how do we no. get with this? Well, I need a seconder for the motion to, to amend. We can do first reading and- We can do, actually, yeah, that's a good that's point. That's true, we can do it in first reading, we can talk about it in committee. Right. That's fair enough. And, and then we can make the- so I, I'll, I'll withdraw, it's all good. Okay. We'll do it at second reading. Okay. You're absolutely right. Okay. Procedurally, there's no need for me to do it now. Okay, any further discussion? Councilor nope. Friesen? No. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of bylaw number 5, 2020, being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River, to establish a rate for the following special services fire protection, street lighting, street cleaning, sidewalks and boulevards, ditches and drainage, doctor recruitment, snow removal and dust control, road maintenance and, re and reconstruction, and emergency measures for the Town of Swan River for the years 2020 and 2021, both inclusive, be read at first time. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, all in favor? Again, opposed? 
That's yeah, fine. Again, just notice that I, my intention is at, at committee and at second reading to move an amendment. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Result of the bylaw 6 2020, setting the rate of taxes for 2020, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor Morio, did you have a question? No, you were just going slower this time. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve the bylaw 7 2020 being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a firefighting incident command vehicle be read a first time. Moved by. Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve the bylaw 8, 2020, being a bylaw to provide for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the purchase of a loader backhoe be read a first time. Moved by. Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. So we're, this is, uh, we're doing a borrowing bar, but this is just a lease, correct? Uh, uh, Mr. Poole. Yeah, that's correct. It'll be uh, uh, paid for out of the reserve. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of bylaw 9, 2020, being a bylaw to provide for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center, Whirlpool, HVAC, and building envelope, including gathering, planning, designing, and other related requirements be read a first time. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolve that bylaw 6, 2020, setting the rate of taxes for 2020, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier. It's a recorded vote. All in favor? Aye. It's carried. <clears throat> Resolved that, that pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss land sale agreement, intermunicipal inter negotiations, grad 2020, and union. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We're in camera. camera. Resolution coming out of camera. Resolved that the town of Swanover accept from Wilmar Falk for $200 per lot for 10 mobile home lots located on 3rd Avenue South, totaling $2,000 plus tax, with the stipulation that the 10 lots be rezoned to residential lots and that two duplexes are to be built on the rezoned lots within three years. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Councillor Delorier. So, so what is what is our pros, what does this look like? Uh, do we put a caveat on the and I might be using the wrong terms, do we put a caveat on the on the land <coughs> that if he doesn't fulfill the obligation we get it back, or what does the agreement actually look like? I think we had, we'd have to work through that. I think Derek was already starting to work on on uh, sort of how how do we recoup the property again. I think you were already looking into that. If, if everything falls apart there. Yeah, yeah if, he, if he doesn't, if he doesn't build two within the three years, I can, I have agreement, I have a, a whole bunch of agreements on this deal because I stopped dealing with offers. I just started writing the agreements, but uh, we can either have it that he gives us money for every year it's not built on, on those two lots, call it, I, I could say $1,500 annually he has to give us on those two lots that he's not built on. 
we can take the property back. I like the money thing because I don't think we should be owning a lot of property. Council Mario. Um, I was just going to say when I bought my lot from the municipal developers, uh, that there was a caveat put on the title that I had to have a house up at the lockup stage within two years. Yeah. And then once I met that condition, then the town rec- got that caveat removed. Yeah, that's that's the paragraph that'll be in here is that he has to have two duplexes, uh, which will be four dwellings within three years uh, to lock up stage. And if he doesn't get to lock up stage on them, then he'll owe us fifteen hundred dollars per lot uh, until until it is done. Okay. Deputy Mayor Tony. The only other question I have, Mr. Pool, and maybe you've talked about it, is what is, what are the plans for the remainder lot uh, remainder of the lots is there an agreement that within eight years that they'll all be all be built on for that price because i mean if his only intentions are to build two of them then let's just sell two lots at 200 bucks but i would like it to be some sort of uh, agreement with the rest of it whether it's eight years or whatever, whatever timeline i guess council feels but that have at that certain point that all the property is developed. He, he's putting those four units will take up all the property. Oh, will take all ten lots. They're just Two, trailer uh, lots right now. No, he'll ha- he'll have to t- go from ten lots down to eight lots. So then that would only cover what the plan is that we're seeing today will only cover two lots. Correct. Yep. Eight. Yep. So there will be eight lots remaining. No, six. Be six lots remaining. So, okay, what is it? Well, it's 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 two duplexes in three years out of eight lots that he'll have to uh, he'll have to go unless he gets a, a variance from you guys to go from a sixty-five minimum lot width to a fifty. Then he can have all ten. But his plan is to to put duplexes on every single lot that he can. He may take two of them and put residential houses on them, but uh, he plans on filling them up. But this this current agreement or offer that he's saying right now will only require him to build two. Two places. Okay, um, Councilor White. So now that he's built two duplexes, that's the general type of structure that we put on the remaining lots. It's not gonna kick over back, that I really care, two trailers. But it'll be z- well. No, he'd be rezoning the entire thing to RS five, uh, and that trailers no, and that tra- trailers wouldn't be allowed after that unless he rezones it back. Okay, um, Councilor Latoni. So, if I'm hearing all of this correctly, and just maybe I'm not, we go through with this agreement. He builds his two duplexes on two of those lots. He's now full ownership of everything what's for him to i guess we would deny the the rezoning change but what's for him to do whatever you know put put trailers back there i guess we would have the right to re- refuse the zoning but yeah he wouldn't be allowed he wouldn't be given the development or the building permit cuz he plans on rezoning it to to residential RS5 so once that happens, uh, he, he can't put a trailer on there unless he puts it back into RMH. So I guess in that agreement, I would like to see that that will never be a possibility. That when, when we go through with this deal, that trailers will not be allowed back on that property. That there will not be rezoning to a trailer zone. And that all of the property is developed within a certain timeline. Um, that that's my two conditions, and I have no no issues with it. So you, you're saying at least eight <clears throat> eight lots, uh, at least eight lots must all be developed within ten years. I I'm fine with that. I, I I'm not. Yeah, I wouldn't want to exceed ten years, but that would be my my aspirations. If we're giving him this land to him at this price, then. Something needs to be built on it. Councilor Delorier. Um, two comments. I guess first comment on uh, on Councilor Tony's comment of, of 
I'll just wait for this guy to pass. Anyways, um, to, I don't think we, there's no mechanism for us to hide, tie the hands of a future council on what they can and can't rezone, like for, to say that it can ne never be rezoned to trailers if some other future council wants to rezone it. There's nothing that this council can do to tie their hands that I know of. Uh, but th that wasn't really my point. Is, so wh why would we sell him all 10 lots if he's only building on four of them? Why would we give him a sweetheart deal on all 10? Why doesn't he just buy four right now, build his, build his things, and we could have an agreement where he has first right of refusal on the other ones or whatever if he's worried about that, but I don't like the idea of selling him all 10, but only we're, we're only getting guaranteed properties on, on four of them. Yeah, he. I guess he states that that he wants. He's he's really undecided on the rest of them whether he's going to do single family houses or or duplexes. Well, it, well, that's fine. But then he just doesn't buy them right now. He can, it, or at least he doesn't get the sweetheart deal right now. So why, for two hundred bucks, I only want to sell the four lots that he's actually building on for two hundred bucks. The other six, I mean. If he if he wants to have that same guarantee, then 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 he gets the deal. But if he doesn't have the the guarantee on the other six, then he doesn't get the deal in my mind. Johnny, Johnny, that that that's what I need to know tonight. Is I need council's minimum for him to not build trailers. We already know what the minimum is if he wants trailers. Now I need the minimum from council if he's not going to build trailers. So. If that's what I go back with him, I'm totally fine with that. I'm fine. We, we, we're debating about this, but I'll let Councillor, uh, when Tony speak, and then we either change the, the resolution or we vote on this resolution. Go ahead. I guess, I guess my last, or the in response to Councillor Delorier, in, in terms of only selling the two lots, I mean, yeah, that'd be great, but as that developer, if I only bought two lots, I had a right of first refusal, and then when Tony Enterprises comes along and says, hey, I want, to, I, I, he has a right of first refusal, but I'm offering $5,000 a lot to him, he'll, if he would to say, no, I don't want to pay that, I mean, that's a slyish way to, to do it as well. If, if that's what our intentions are, then... If he doesn't want to pay it, then it goes to Tony Enterprises. Yes, I know, but he's already under the impression that we would allow that to go through for two hundred dollars a lot, and now he's only built the two properties and lost the rest. Well, then, then he should make the commitment on all the properties. If he's worried about Co that, make the commitment. Right. Um, for, firstly, just in terms of binding future councils, we can't in the sense that other councils can always amend agreements, but we can certainly put in the agreement any clause we want that requires him to do certain things or not do certain things and pay a penalty which would be the full price of the lot if he fails to do it it would only be three lots that he would need for the purpose of building two duplexes because his division the amount the size would just be divided differently for that the difficulty yeah. for him will be that if he wants to rezone it um there are some issues about going from 10 to 8 because there's no mechanism for selling the appropriate size of lots. Yeah, and that's only our zoning bylaw that, that says 65 feet for for uh, for duplexes, and he, he thinks 50 is massive. He's used to tiny lots in the downtown Winnipeg, so he's, o he's okay with 50. So he's, he's likely going to try and, and get all 10 on there, He'll, he'll ask you guys for a, a variance from 65 to 50 in order to get all 10. He's, uh, he wants to go. Mr. Crow, uh, well, from, from what I understand, he's a developer to start with. I think he's, he's offering what he can minimally guarantee over the next couple of years. If we put a, if we put a, a stipulation in here that the remaining lots are to be fully developed within 10 years, that would really solve the problem, wouldn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And then it's done. I mean, he may sit on it for six or seven years, but as everyone knows, especially in this light of this economy and stuff, the way it is right now, he's making a guarantee of building two duplexes, which is more than anybody else was willing to build there Thanks. yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I think if we just put that caveat in there, we build it so that 
we have some good guarantees that you know what he intends to do is what we're asking him to do, and everybody's on the same page. I think it would be good. Good idea. Yeah. Councilor what, Gray. What, wouldn't the, the, the plan be instead that he build them over time? That is, that, that he build no less than one a year or something of that nature? Wouldn't that make more sense? It, it, it would for us, but why, why, why restrict him like that? If he wants to build eight in the last year, go for it. Well, because, because the whole reason he's getting, there's two things I want to raise. The, the, the first one is he's getting the lots for essentially for free. And so the reason that we're giving them for free is so that we'll get the tax revenue from having them built on, isn't it? I mean, I, I again, I'm gonna defer from the vote, but that's the first part. The, the second part is I presume that in the agreement we'll say that he doesn't get any tax breaks. With with this super deal, uh, he's expecting the, the no tax breaks, but that-, well, that I would hope so. That is that I, I need council to say no tax breaks. No tax breaks. So, so effectively, we're giving him because there will be taxes on the duplexes, and the amount of taxes will be somewhat, will at least be close to what the total value of the. We're giving them up, to, uh, giving it to him up front, is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, it's actually more. We're giving him more than than the tax breaks, but the tax breaks will come up to some portion of that. But, but I, again, it would seem to me that you would want to have them have him develop one every year because the purpose is to get tax revenues. And if he defaults, then the rest return to us. Councilman Tony. I move to, uh, to have the resolution changed to uh, three years of if that's our worry, then I just wanted to. I think that this changed since the first time I looked at it. So the first two lines in Arizona really developed within ten years. If, I, in my opinion, we either it's it's hard with a developer, and I know that if I was in that situation, that I would just like to have you know a certain timeline that they all have to be built. Um, things happen within developers, and may, they may not be able to build one every year, but in a at a say year six comes along and whatever I was working on previously is sold and now I can do with the rest of them. I'd rather just see it as clean and as cut as we can. Um, $2,000 $2, for all, all the package or for the package lot it needs to be rezoned to R5 and that it's all built on within eight years, 10 years, whatever the I'd move it to eight. I'd even let it go to eight, and we're getting tax dollars. So anyway, I would like the resolution to change, and then we can vote on it, so we can go home. So Thank you. fully developed over eight years. Um, no, there's no tax incentive on it, and the price is the price. Must be rezoned to. Well, let's hear last words, and then we can talk about amendments. Um, what what did we do over in the southeast corner on people that got the the deal on the lots there? Did they get the tax break as well? Absolutely. David, did you get a tax break as well as you? Yeah, I got the two year uh, tax incentive where it was a seventy five percent rebate. It go based on the value of the home. Plus, plus, you got a deal on the lot. Uh, yeah, two thousand dollars for the lot, and then. And I, I guess I should clarify that if it's RS5, he gets 10 lots. If he goes to RS6, it's eight. Sorry, I should have clarified that earlier. But he'll go to RS5 and keep them at 50. He'll have 10 lots. Okay. Councilor uh, White. Hey, I give every lot and tell it away for a dollar if we got guys building out. I just don't understand, so we got it for 200 bucks. Good for him. He's building a new house. David got a tax incentive. I got a tax. Why is it any different? Why should he not? Because he was uh, opportunistic, got the deal. Why shouldn't he get the tax incentive? Everybody else has got it. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, Councillor Morio, I guess you move the um, resolution. Are we okay with making any amendments to it? What does well, it say? What's the, what's the amendment we're looking at? I can go over 10 years. Oh, okay. I just refreshed here. Uh, just, just let me, just let me 
That's uh, 210 Third Avenue South, Charles. Okay. Go ahead. Derek, has he mentioned anything about the uh, tax incentive? Uh, oh yeah, he want, he definitely wants the tax incentive, but he knows that this this is an odd one for him. He doesn't. He doesn't deal with councils like this, so... Uh, in what regards? He, he, he doesn't want to make you guys mad. Well, just just dealing on, on lots like this to be so involved with council, usually he's dealing with me and I have the bottom line and and what I say goes, but... Uh, well, we've been talking about this for a long time. Well, a lot's changed since since the original offer. Okay, okay. so you're welcome to reread it if you'd like. So uh, I will reread the uh, resolution that has been asked to be amended. Result that the town of Swan River accept the offer from Wilmar Folk for $200 per lot for 10 mobile home lots located at 210 Third Avenue South, totaling $2,000 plus taxes with the stipulation that the 10 lots be rezoned to residential RS5 lots and that two, dupl two, two duplexes are to be built on the rezoned lots within three years and Further, that the remaining lots be fully developed within eight years. I'm good with that amendment. Who was the seconder? White. White. Okay. Are we ready to vote then? Any more discussion? Okay. So, Derek, in the agreement, will you be spelling out what fully developed means? Like, he'll have to construct a <coughs> home on there? He'll have I'm gonna I'm gonna be spelling it all out to e it'll either be a duplex or a single family residence uh, uh, dwelling to lock up stage and I would say once the eight years are up we get the lots back or would you guys rather see a fifteen hundred dollar annual charge on every lot that isn't to lock up stage? Sure, let's get the money first. Yeah. If, yeah. If, I, if if you give me an okay on both of those, then at least I have options with them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah. What do we do? What about the uh, tax incentive? Am I alone voice to over this year? No. Yes, that's why I, I had the, the exempt, to be exempted from the tax incentive, but throughout the consensus, they came back that they're going to get the tax incentive if they qualify. So. Council Moore, you have to for it? I think the tax incentive thing is a new point right now because it's he's within three years, and it's only after two years that once the house is up to lockup stage, it becomes so. This is a and the tax incentive program is a separate program from selling lots. And this is a debate whether we have a tax incentive program when he's eligible for it five years down the road. That's a good point. Well, yeah. I, I guess the point of this debate, though, is to make him ineligible for it by, by virtue of, make, of including in the agreement that's what would make him ineligible for it. So if, eligible. Well, no, if we don't even say anything, he'll be eligible. Okay. That, that's why I had it in there, yeah. and then I took it back out because the consensus seemed to go toward just giving the incentive if they qualify. Yeah, I, I'm fine giving the incentive if they qualify. Okay. Okay, well, so then if there's no other further discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Okay, it's carried. I'd, I'd like to register an abstention, Your Worship. Okay. Who knows, we may not even have a tax incentive program by that time. Result of this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councilor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? That's Opposed? good suggestion. It's carried.